through the, the intro and then uh, see if anyone else joins and can jump right in. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So hi everybody, thanks for joining this evening's workshop. My name is Brian Alexander and I'm a senior management analyst with the city of San Mateo's community development department. I am joined this evening by Sandy Council, the housing manager for the city of San Mateo, who will be taking notes and documenting your feedback. And then we also have Mary Way, who will be managing the chat and helping to facilitate our discussion this evening. And I think, yep, she just she just changed her name to chat to me. So if you have questions or comments, be sure to send them directly to her. Um, as Joanna mentioned, Mary will be staying with you for the duration of the workshop. And then Sandy and I are gonna be rotating through rooms to talk about our assigned study areas. So you'll have a rotating set of facilitators as you talk about the different parts of San Mateo. Uh, we're going to be covering four study areas in each breakout session, and we have about 25 minutes to do it. So we want to spend about five minutes or so per study area. Um, we can focus our conversation on one or two if that's the preference, but it'll mean we'll have to shorten the time spent on the remaining areas. Um, as a reminder, we're not asking you to pick a preferred alternative tonight. We're asking you whether we have captured the right range of alternatives for these particular portions of the city in at least one of the three alternatives. Um, so the bolded and underlined questions are what we are gonna be focused on. Again, we're not making any decisions today, but your feedback will be used to inform how we move forward and what specifically we ultimately study. And then lastly, just uh, a reminder, you can make comments or ask questions via chat or by raising your hand and you'll be unmuted and we're gonna be capturing your questions and comments as we go. Um, Joanna mentioned this in the initial presentation, but just briefly, I want to review the differences between the three alternatives. So alternative A in general has the least amount of change in the designations and the lowest amount of overall growth. Alternative B is, is in the middle, the second highest amount of residential growth, and it also spreads it out more evenly across all 10 of the study areas. And then alternative C has the highest amount of residential growth, and it's generally concentrated uh, around the transit areas. So study area three uh, and study area four. And we're gonna be talking about study area three as one of our uh, assigned areas in this particular breakout session. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna pull up our um, current land use map. Actually, I'm gonna show you this, this overview of the city just to orient you to what we're gonna be looking at. So the areas that are assigned to us in this particular session are two pieces of study area one. So there's this area, which is between about Central Park and 92 along El Camino. Study area three, which is the largest study area in the city. It includes the areas around the, Cal the Caltrain station, so Hillsdale and Hayward Park, uh, the Hillsdale Mall, and then all this area along El Camino here. Um, this southern portion of study area one, which is just uh, about four or five blocks along El Camino to the south of study area three, and then this area of study area eight, which is uh, the 92101 interchange and the areas immediately surrounding it. So <clears throat> I will, if you have particular areas you wanna make sure we cover, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. But I think to get started, we'll pick an area that is, a, is not study area three, just so everybody can get comfortable with the information being presented and can provide your feedback. So let's jump to study area eight, which is this 92101 interchange area. So in terms of what this area has now, again, we're looking at 101 and 92 here. So it includes uh, this existing office park here. The Marriott is this parcel right here. And then there's another existing office area up in this section uh, to the north end of the study area. Um, then we have, this is the area around the fish market here in this red. And then there's an existing office park to the south here of 92 and then this is Parkside Plaza, the sort of mint green color here on our existing land use map. And so here are the three proposed alternatives for this particular study area. So I'll run through sort of the high level differences between them and then I will uh, open it up to questions or comments on, on anything you think might be missing or things you'd like to see added uh, or changed in here. 
So across the three study areas, uh, A and C have this residential low designation up here at the north end, which is currently office space, whereas alternative B has a medium designation. And again, a low means one to three stories generally. A medium is about four to seven. Uh, in all three scenarios, this San Mateo uh, Marriott stays the same, so it's a regional commercial designation. And then in all three, this primary parcel here, this office park stays as an office high designation. Um, these two parcels here in study area A are a mixed use low, and then in B and C, it's a mixed use medium use. And then Parkside Plaza is different in all three. So in study area or in alternative A, it's a mixed use low designation. So that's one to three stories that could include residential, retail, a number of different uses. Uh, in B, it's residential medium. So four to seven story residential. And then in C, it's mixed use medium. So a little bit of a combination of A and C there for that particular parcel. Um, and then this large parcel, which is currently office to the south of uh, 92, would be a medium office designation, so four to seven stories of office in alternative A. Uh, it's residential low, so one to three stories in alternative B, and then a residential medium in alternative C, so four to seven story, um, four to seven story residential. So with that, um, that's sort of the, the high level overview of the differences between the three. I also want to, to turn it over to anybody who might have any thoughts about things we're missing. Is this the right range of alternatives here? Are there land uses that might not be captured in any of these three alternatives that you'd like to see included in study area eight? And while we're waiting for, for any questions, I also do want to point out, as I mentioned, the in general across the city, alternative A has the least amount of growth in terms of additional population. Um, B and C for the purposes of study area eight are very similar. So you see about 2,500 new residents in alternative B, uh, about 2,700 in alternative C. It's just a matter of where they're located within the study area. So here they would be primarily uh, in this residential medium designation up here uh, and in the Parkside Plaza, which would be residential medium and then it would be a down here in this section south of 92 and alternative C, uh, which is a residential medium designation. Ryan, I have a first question. Sure. It is, is residential high in current commercial areas prohibited by measure Y? So in general, measure Y would prohibit currently an eight plus story land use. Um, but given that we are looking at a 20 year time horizon, uh, it extends beyond the sunset of Measure Y. So we were directed to look at a number of different alternatives, including potential land uses that might exceed our current land use um, regulations or, or our height restrictions, but might not, um, but might account for the fact that those height restrictions may not be there in 20 years when this general plan is going to be um, sort of seen to the end. Can I add to that, Brian? It's yeah. just a slightly different um, answer. Um, yeah. So Brian addressed just the um, height, and I'd all, and I'm not sure if this is what you're asking in your question, but currently um, at lower heights, uh, ha residential is allowed in most commercial zones. So mm -hmm. that is something that um, some of the com some of the commercial zone sites actually are already designated as um, as mixed use that could be go commercial or residential and then others that don't have that specific designation can be uh, developed as residential or mixed use with a special use permit so in most places in the city current commercial and exec office um, properties could be built as residential under certain circumstances Thanks, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Brian, I don't see any more. Oh, wait, here's another question. Okay. Um, how do we include an option to convert existing executive office parks, commercial or industrial, to be rezoned residential to meet the proposed RENA goals? So the feedback would be, for example, why is this parcel 
an office high designation and all three alternatives as opposed to exploring something that might be residential on this use or for the for the Marriott, for example, and if I'm understanding the comment correctly. I think that's how do we include an option? Yeah, to convert. Yes, okay. yes, that is the answer. That's what they're asking. The okay. next question is, I believe that the land north of the Marriott is currently office space. Do all three of these scenarios take all those offices and put them into the purple office high land? No, so again, um, just because these land use designations are changing doesn't necessarily mean anything will happen to that particular parcel. If that parcel were be, to be redeveloped, this is looking at what would the allowable uses be for that particular piece of land. So this isn't making any projections or assumptions about where those offices might be relocated. It's simply saying if those offices were to be redeveloped, what type of land use would be appropriate for that particular parcel. And then another question, do you think there is an area located in this area that could be used for R&D? We could certainly capture that, that comment. It's not currently reflected in any of the three alternatives, but we can, um, we can take that comment down. Um, does someone have an idea of what a, a good location for R&D might be in here? in this um, study area? And again, that's the- It would be helpful if someone had an idea of where it might go. Maybe near Fashion Island area. And then- um, Okay, we're not looking, okay. So just, just a point of clarification, there'll be another, um, session looking at the fashion island area okay. they're our, saying that the oh, pink oh, oh oh the pink right there the pink. fashion yeah okay gotcha 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 thank you uh so that's actually fashion island in norfolk okay thank you yep and then um going back to the question um there was a request to get a clarification of the response how do we include an option to convert existing executive office commercial or industrial to be rezoned residential to meet the prop proposed RENA goals. So um, I think that they were just wanting you to kind of repeat your answer to that. Yeah, so I mean, what we've included here, I think is this is probably in reference to the fact that these two parcels in particular, and probably this one since they've referenced office high, um, stay the same across all three alternatives. So if the commenter is saying that we would like, they would like to explore a potential different use in one of the alternatives, we can certainly take that comment and, and bring that back for consideration. Okay, and then I think somebody's wondering about um, R&D area north of its 16 Marriott for R&D, yeah. So- oh, okay. Up here, okay. Also, that's another, um, another comment. So I think we should probably move on, Brian. Yep. Because, okay. So let's go to study area three, because I know at least in the last two sessions, this has been the area that has sort of generated the most comments. Um, and so to orient you here, uh, this is El Camino in 92. So this is the Burrell Square Shopping Center. The Hillsdale Mall is down here. Um, the two Caltrain stations are are designated by these sort of railroad icons on the map. And then what you'll see across each of the three alternatives is that most of the change or the most of the differences between them are actually concentrated to the west of the Caltrain tracks. Um, if, you're to the, if you're to the east here, most of this is already accounted for because it's either been recently approved or it's governed by the Bay Meadows uh, specific plan. So a lot of these things are perhaps already developed and are reflected that way as the same across all the different alternatives. So just as you look at this, I know it's a lot of information to take in, but focus in particular on everything to the west of the railroad tracks here. So to highlight the main, the main differences, um, in alternative A, the Burrell Square Shopping Center is a mixed use medium designation. And again, Joanna mentioned this at the beginning, but these green peas with the circle around them are a privately owned public open space. So there would be some sort of open space components involved with this 
if were to be redeveloped as a residential medium or a mixed use medium designation. Um, 25th Avenue here is mixed use low in alternative A. So this area, um, these this current shops, uh, neighborhood commercial. And then Hillsdale Mall is a commercial regional and mixed use medium combination. So the commercial regional here, and then this mixed use medium down here again with that uh, privately owned public open space. An alternative B, the Burrell Square Shopping Center is a residential medium. Again, that open space as a component of that project. The 25th Avenue corridor is a mixed use medium designation. So slightly more dense than an alternative A. And then the Hillsdale Shopping Center is again, a combination between a regional commercial and a mixed use medium designation. And then an alternative C, uh, the Burrell Square Shopping Center is mixed use high. So eight plus stories of mixed use could be a combination of residential and retail. Uh, 25th Avenue is mixed use medium. So it's the same designation as an alternative B. And then uh, Hillsdale Mall is a combination of mixed use medium and mixed use high here in alternative C. So I will pause there. I know this is a lot of information to take in uh, and I have them all three sort of next to each other here. Um, so you can sort of highlight the or see the various differences between the three. But happy to return to any of the individual slides as well if you'd like to zoom in on one alternative in particular. Okay, um, Brian, where is a question? Are the white zones single family neighborhoods within walk walking distance of those Caltrain stations? Can they be zoned to allow townhomes or neighborhood scale apartments like fourplexes? So I think the reference is, so these dotted lines here indicate the area around the Caltrain station. They're probably referencing these white areas, not part of the study area. Um, so it's not currently part of the study area, but we can certainly take the comment that, that they should be, um, they should be considered given their proximity to transit. Yes, please is what is the comment. That's exactly the comment. Yep. Okay, I'm capturing that, thank you. Um, and then some feedback, it would be great to have street view or satellite view to help orient. This is a ton of info to take in and provide input on a short amount of time. Yeah, I, I agree. It is a lot of information. Um, if there is a particular, if there are particular questions to orient you, I'm happy to answer them. Um, or I could just sort of spend a little bit more time on each of these going through where things are so that everybody understands where we're looking at in terms of where of, of within the city. I also just want to say that this online exercise is available on the Strive San Mateo page as well. So there on that page, there are some additional mapping tools that you can use that do have satellite functions. So if you want to take um, some additional time maybe you feel this is, is a lot of information and don't think you can fully provide your feedback tonight, you can use that strivesanmateo.org survey tool and do some more in-depth digging at uh, some of the different maps and provide your feedback on your own time. So I, I don't have any more um comments on this okay. area. Why don't I go to study area one and if more comments come in, we can address them as they come in. Actually, could you talk a little bit about the area just north of the Hillsdale Mall? Mm -hmm. Names of businesses may help with orientation. And then just to let you know, we have about five minutes left, Brian. Okay. Um, in that case, why don't I jump to study area one and I'll pull up a separate Google map that can help sort of orient to that particular, this area here. Um, but let me pull up study area one first. So this area of study area one is the El Camino corridor between about Central Park and 92. And so right now it's a mixture of a regional com commercial um, and some mixed use uses. And so across the three uh, alternatives, they're sort of split into two in terms of the main differences between the three. So up here at the northern end from about 12th Avenue up to Central Park, you see an alternative A that is mostly mixed use low designations. 
And then it's a combination of uh, mixed use medium. There's a mixed use high up here at this northern parcel and then mixed use medium for the most part here in alternative C. If you look at the southern portion, so south of 12th Avenue, it's a combination of a mixed use medium and office high, which is this dark purple. Uh, here it's a residential high, this dark brown color um, with an additional office high and a mixed use high mixed in. And then there is, um, again, a mixed use medium mixture with an office high mixture here as well in alternative C. So if anybody has any comments on this, uh, I will leave this up here. Or I can jump to the southern portion of alternative uh, or of study area one to make sure that we at least cover that. Brian, there is um, a few questions. Sure. Um, let's see. Why are we discussing buildings taller than eight stories when voters in San Mateo just recently passed Measure Y? When Measure Y is over voters, over, voters might pass another measure to keep limits on building heights. Yeah, and I, I certainly hear that concern. I think for the purposes of this exercise, We've been instructed to look at a range of different alternatives and possibilities over a 20 year time horizon. And it's certainly possible that the measure would be extended after it sunsets, but that sunset happens about halfway through this general plan update process in terms of the timeline that we're looking at. And so we wanted to include some additional um, densities and land uses that might not be allowable currently, but could be allowable by the time the general plan uh, reaches its end in 2040. And then there's another question. Are there equity concerns about putting so much housing right next to the ECR instead of slightly away from that road? We could take in that in that comment. Um, does the commenter want to provide any additional or elaborate on any of those concerns? Mike, would you like to elaborate? Yeah, it's just... Uh... I mean, I think we all know that El Camino is really busy. Uh, there's a lot of pollution from cars. Uh, there's a lot of noise from traffic. Uh, it just seems like if you're gonna build housing where people are gonna you know, spend substantial portions of their lives, uh, it'd make more sense to do it you know, even a block away from El Camino to shield them from those impacts. And you know, when it's not necessarily great for workers in those stores to be that close to the noise and pollution, but at least it's not as many hours of their lives uh, spent right there. Got it, thank you for thank you for the elaboration. We will take that comment in as well. Yeah, I got it, thank you. And we've got about a minute left here. All right, well then let me just quickly run through the Southern end of study area one. So this is um, El Camino again, between the Southern end of the Hillsdale Mall and about 40th Avenue here. Um, so it's a combination of a commercial neighborhood. So these would be basically retail locations that would meet, serve the immediately surrounding area. So shops that people who live in this community might be able to walk to. Um, where the FedEx is up here, it's a mixed use low designation. And I'm blocking my own screen with this Zoom window. So it's a combination of a mixed use low here and a residential medium, and then a residential low and mixed use low. And so really it's it's a matter of how these fronts along El Camino here change between the three alternatives. And then there's a comment um, or a question, does the session include infrastructure changes to accommodate the scenarios? So there will be some of the discussion of that in the circulation element or the circulation alternatives uh, portion of the evening. If you have particular thoughts about a study area and the infrastructure impacts, we also would recommend or, or welcome comments or questions about that in the sort of individual study area discussions as well. And that is actually coming up next. So that would be our next, yeah. Okay, we're being asked to move. <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, so our next will be circulation and Sue Ellen will be joining us with Brian M.
and it'll just be a second, guys, and they will be joining us. Any um, questions that have come up that I can help with while we're waiting for uh, Brian and Sue Ellen to join us? Um, there were questions about Measure Y, but I believe they were answered um, just about why are we, you know, having scenarios with these um, uh -huh. taller buildings, but Brian and um, Sandy seem to answer those. Um, I, uh, nothing else, I don't think. Okay. Hello. Okay, I'm in the right one. <laughs> Good job, Brian. Yeah. Hi. Um, so I'll introduce myself and um, the team here. So I'm Brian Manford. I'm with Nelson Nygaard. We're the transportation consultant working with PlaceWorks and we're leading the circulation element. I'm also joined by Sue Ellen, who's um, a transportation planner with the city of San Mateo. She'll be taking notes and also answering some questions um, from San Mateo's side that maybe she has more information on. And we also have Carrie Stone from PlaceWorks um, who can answer some questions about the process as well. Um, and then hopefully you know everyone else. Um, let me share the maps. And uh, Christina and I are both kind of floating around among breakout rooms to help with any questions or just listen in. Um, so I'll be here for a little while and then step out. Um, so a little bit of background. I know you probably won't be able to see it yet. So I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, but during this breakout session, I'm gonna walk you through three draft circulation alternatives. Um, and the circulation is the mobility, the roads, transit, sidewalks, all of that type of stuff. It's a little break from looking in at the, at the land use alternatives. Um, and what you see on the map are gonna be different lines representing different um, changes to the street network and transit network. Um, and they include already across all three of the plans, all three of the alternatives, any adopted plan by the city. So that includes the bicycle master plan, the pedestrian master plan, um, downtown parking plan, um, also existing programs like the neighborhood traffic management program. Um, and then the city's also um, kind of concurrently with this project and gonna embark soon on a complete streets plan, which will look at um, circulation and safety on um, for all modes on San Mateo streets. So that'll look at some more detail around um, circulation and kind of the implementation of some of the high level policies and vision in the general plan. Um, and then in addition to those plans that are shown on the map um, or represented is the, um, the gray dots are um, existing um, Caltrain crossings that are at at grade, so as most of you probably know, um, the you know streets have a signal and have to wait for the train to cross. Um, and so those are kind of being considered outside of the alternatives. Um, and then also regional plans like um, Caltrain business plan and electrification, which will improve Caltrain service. Those are happening um, kind of outside of the general plan process as well. Um, so with um, the first alternative, alternative A, um, this is prioritizing a walkable city. So you have um, the green dots are um, kind of a envisioned um, pedestrian network from the um, pedestrian master plan. The orange or red line is existing um, trails, so like a, a bike and walk multi-use trail. Um, where it's dotted, that's a future one um, as envisioned by the bike plan. Um, and then we've also added a new crossing of 101 um, at Cypress Avenue um, to better connect um, study area seven and the downtown um, and kind of the east-west um, San Mateo. Um, and then there's also downtown, um, yeah, so orange, red is trail, purple is um, uh, pedestrian, oh no, is bike, and then green is pedestrian. So the purple is the recently adopted, the dotted is kind of the adopted bike plan and the straight line, the solid line is existing. Um, and this doesn't necessarily specify exactly, is it a bikeway, is it a bike lane, is it protected? It's just part of the bike network. 
Um, and then if we zoom into, um, this is downtown San Mateo, um, and this is the Caltrain station. Here on um, B Street, um, we're looking at an alternative A, um, pedestrianizing two blocks that's shown in the blue. We're also looking at um, this kind of darker blue um, areas that are missing sidewalks and closing those gaps. Um, so there's only this one here, but there's more in other parts of the city. And then on El Camino, um, shown in this light green is um, public realm improvements and bike improvements to make a kind of a Northwest um, corridor for biking and um, enhance it for people getting to transit and just getting to El Camino uh, walking. Um, and then I'll show you here, there's some missing sidewalk um, over by Hayward Park. Um, also there. And then the last piece of this is, um, you know, we have this study area with a highway interchange in the middle of it. So um, making it safer by looking at the safety improvements at the off ramps. Um, and then also, again, filling in the missing sidewalk, improving the bikeway through the study area. And that's true over here. Um, and then um, in study area nine at Hillsdale Boulevard. And this is a long planned um, uh, pedestrian improvement project. Um, so that's alternative A. Alternative B, we're looking at, um, so the first one was kind of walkable city, walking in your neighborhood. This next one is, okay, Caltrain is improving. Um, we're gonna have more trains. They're gonna be faster and more frequent. How do we take advantage of that and um, build something um, positive? And that's connecting people better to Caltrain. So, Brian, can uh, I interrupt? I have a, just sure. a couple of comments that um, you might be able to address. They want to know um, which scenario allows for horn noise reduction regarding train crossings. And then the second part is what is special about pedestrian paths from regular sidewalks? Yeah, great questions. So, one, um, the horn noise um, wasn't considered as part of the circulation alternatives. Um, I do, the horn noises are definitely set by the federal safety um, for trains the F, in the FTA. So I'm not sure how much the general plan can address that, but I do know like long-term as the um, crossings are um, reduced um, where the road overlaps the, the rail, that will become less of an issue. Um, and as far as the, um, the green dotted line, the pedestrian network, um, I believe in the pedestrian um, master plan, there's kind of details as what that would specifically look at, but it is sidewalk improvements, but also looking at things in the public realm, like um, the tree coverage um, and um, the crossing safety. And then um, again, with the complete streets plan coming up in the future, um, there's a, kind of a new opportunity to look at what these pedestrian enhancements might look like. Um, Brian, I can just add really briefly about rail noise. I've worked in other communities um, that were addressing that same issue, and it's definitely something that um, the general plan can, uh, not that the general plan can solve, because as Brian said, it's regulated at the federal level, and there's a process for um, requesting changes to the horn protocols. Um, on the rail line. So the city can't unilaterally direct or require a operator to change their horns, but there is a process to go through. And so for example, the general plan could include an action um, to direct the city to undertake that process or initiate that process. And that's something that could be done under any of these alternatives. And so it's really independent um, of the alternatives and something that would come up through the process if it's something that we're interested in, including in the general plan. But the general plan, as you saw, does have something that's called a noise element, which is specifically about addressing sources of noise in uh, the community. So it, it's certainly an appropriate topic for the general plan, but it's something that could apply to any of these alternatives. Thanks, Joanna. Um, so an alternative B, and I'm a little bit zoomed out because I wanna show you the whole transit line, um, thinking about connecting the city as a whole, but then also these areas that are potentially planned for more growth like study area six um, to Caltrain so that um, people living there can, can access that. So um, 
this kind of light yellow line, gold line, um, represents a new east-west transit corridor that would connect, um, excuse me, uh, San, San Mateo College and Study Area 6 to Hillsdale Station, which has the best Caltrain service now and in the future, as well as Study Areas 10 um, on Fashion Island and um, Study Area 9 to Caltrain. Um, and then in addition to that kind of east-west connection, um, also looking at um, El Camino Real and looking at um, bus rapid transit um, to enhance um, transit experience and travel times along El Camino and um, what exactly bus rapid transit looks like on El Camino, those kind of details would be in the future, but it could mean things like a bus only lane, um, signal preemption where the, um, you know, the light turns green for the bus, enhanced stops, um, newer and lower floor and nicer buses, um, real-time information, off-board payments. There's a lot of, and again, it's re regulated at the federal level, but a lot of improvements that go into making bus rapid transit. It would also um, require coordinating with um, Sam Trans and kind of the neighboring cities and Caltrans. Um, so those are the key elements of, um, of alternative B, this kind of east-west transit connection to Caltrain and then El Camino enhancement um, of the bus service. Um, and then in alternative three, um, we're looking at all of it together. So regional connections, supporting walking, and also is there an emerging mobility, future technology that we can take advantage of? So- um, Can I go back a little bit just to a question? What is the purple line on 20th Avenue? I think it's from alternative B. Yeah, the purple lines um, should be the same throughout and purple is a bikeway. So if it's a solid line, that's an existing bikeway. And if it's a dotted line, that's a future one. That's part of the um, uh, recently adopted bike master plan. Okay, I have a few more comments, but I'll wait till you present this, Brian, and then we'll we'll go sure. to the, that. There's not too much more on this. Um, so, um, you know, exactly how it would all fit onto El Camino is to be determined, but looking at on El Camino, you know, can we do bike improvements, pedestrian realm improvements, and transit improvements? So kind of putting all that together on El Camino. In downtown San Mateo, and I'll zoom in, these kind of lighter highlighted areas, can we do, because it has a traditional grid pattern, can we do like in Barcelona, a super block or other kind of traffic calming um, urban design concept where um, rather than going through every intersection, you kind of have to turn right so you, cars can still access, but it, it calms the traffic and it opens up a lot of space for um, public realm um, and things like plazas and trees and parks um, and outdoor dining. Um, and then um, we also have for this east-west um, transit connector, is this something, you know, if it's implemented 10 years down the line, what does technology look like? Is this something an automated vehicle could do? Could we have, it's called a route deviated shuttle and these exist now um, with a driver, but you know, you can use an app to select your ride and it comes and picks you up like within a set service zone. So is that some way we can improve service uphill here and over in the um, Fashion Island? Um, that's maybe more creative and different, taking advantage of new technology um, that's not um, traditional transit route. Um, so, um, and that's been confusing, um, but it's essentially a, a route deviated transit route, but can it be delivered in the future with um, emerging technology? So those are the key differences um, between the two. So the question today isn't necessarily, which is your favorite, but, you know, maybe what elements do you really like? Is there something missing? Have we captured the right range in these three alternatives? So I welcome any comments or clarifying questions. Okay, I have quite a few. Um, so I'll start with the first that came in. In alternative A, it shows El Camino as a main bike route. That seems like a dangerous place for bikes, unless there is going to be a physical buffer between the cars and bikes. Would there be one? Yeah, so um, as envisioned here, in order to be this kind of bike um, corridor, it, it would need um, a lot of safety improvements, including separation. But what that exact design looks like, um, 
you know, I, it hasn't been designed yet, but that, that's the concept that it would be a separated high quality bike path. And then um, are you looking for feedback on intersection level needed changes to accommodate increased traffic? Um, I'm not quite sure what that's referring to. Is that, and maybe you can clarify the question, like, are we looking at intersections that have traffic that we want to respond to in this or, or are they asking something else? Amy, do you want to um, unmute yourself and, and give clarification? Uh, yes, this is Ben. Hi, in Ben. Session, they were talking about, uh, in, in this session, you would take feedback on like, like let's say, whatever intersection by AutoZone is, is a dangerous intersection. If we're going to have more traffic, um, you know, there needs to be changes to the infrastructure there with lights and stuff to accommodate that. So is that correct? Are you looking for that type of feedback here? Yeah, maybe Sue Ellen, um, I think she might be able to clarify. Um, something like this at the intersection level, if it's something like a corridor or if it's in a study area, um, then I think that is appropriate. But the um, um, complete streets plan is going to look at things in more detail, such as intersection um, safety. Um, so the only ones we've called out here are really related to kind of the highway on and off ramps and, and the anticipated growth in these areas. And then just, we have about five minutes left. Um, the next question is, how much time would it save getting across the city if El Camino had a dedicated bus lane? That'd get a lot more people to ride it. Yeah, that's a great comment. And I'm not sure if that exactly has been studied, the time savings, um, but um, it, it can be really significant. And the other thing it does is it makes the bus more reliable. So it takes fewer buses to provide the same service if you have that dedicated lane. So that's why it's kind of a virtuous cycle of um, being able to provide better service. And then maybe I missed it, but some, but do some of these options change the width or direction of traffic? So um, we're not um, looking at traffic direction changes at this level, um, but, and we're not looking at um, like calling out specific, we're gonna add lanes here, like at the, at the traffic level. Um, again, the complete streets plan will look at kind of holistically the entire transportation network at a, very, at a more detailed level than this. Um, and um, there are things like um, intelligent transportation, systems, ITS. Um, and so that's like um, intelligent signals um, and um, other changes to the transportation network that can um, reduce, well, can increase the amount of vehicles that can travel through the intersection um, without necessarily widening it. Because um, the city's mostly built out. And so widening most roads um, and intersections means um, a really high cost. And it also is that there's a human cost of having to kind of, um, you know, take into someone's front property or even remove the property entirely. So we, in these maps, we haven't proposed any um, large um, traffic direction changes or large um, new, new roads. And then um, there's a comment about uh, maybe an option to have uh, north to South Street parallel to El Camino um, to be the main bike route because um, El Camino is a busy street and will be more so with additional mixed use. And that's a comment. Um, yeah, that's great. And another, um, another comment is that uh, people trying to park in downtown cannot uh, find parking. Is there any plan to make a um, the charge more so that there's turnover. It seems like most parking is free even on Friday or Saturday night. So I don't know if parking is part of this. Um, yeah, so parking is considered as part of the general plan. And so that's helpful feedback um, as we um, look at kind of another piece of this is the um, policies. And so there's definitely going to be some parking policies. There are in the existing plan and there will be in the um, 
in this process. So, so that's helpful a, feedback. There's a couple minutes left, and I have um, w one other question right now. Um, the commenter said they didn't hear any discussion regarding what will we do with personal vehicles for movement and parking in the future? Yeah, and I think, um, thanks for that comment. I think you see the network right now. Um, and so that has, you know, it's really, it's been built historically for vehicles and, and personal driving and parking. And so um, while we're making changes to that network, and to some degree that is largely staying the same. And, and part of that is the maintenance costs of it. Um, and like I said, the city's really built out. So putting a new highway through is gonna be really challenging. Um, and so now what we've been looking at is, um, you know, how can we make sure that where new growth is expected, we can um, provide transportation choices for those people so that they can access transit if they want and that it's safe for them to walk and bike around their neighborhoods. And then a comment about um, bike lanes uh, be protected someone's asking they don't ride a bike in San Mateo because um, it's unprotected and cars are driving so fast if there were bike protected lanes it would make a huge difference and it would get encourage more people to ride bikes yeah that's that's great feedback again at, you know at this level we're kind of just showing the bike network and the you know recently adopted bike master plan um, includes that you know uh, protected um, you know, on street painted, some of those differences. So um, that is in the bike, um, adopted bike plan. But that, okay, that's Brian, helpful to hear. It's time for you guys to go. Okay, okay. thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Um, the next uh, facilitators will be Linda and Nikki V. Um, and they should be on in just a minute. Thank you for everybody for your comments. And she, Linda's joining us now. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. One moment. Okay. Thank you all for joining us tonight. So as Mary mentioned, my name is Linda Lee. I'm an associate planner with the city of San Mateo. I'm also joined with Nikki Vu. He is our note taker tonight. He's with the housing division as a housing specialist. And just a quick reminder of our purpose tonight in the breakout room, we are really looking to gather everyone's input and thoughts on the different uh, alternatives being considered for the study areas. And we would like to hear if you think, you know, is this the right range? And if not, are there ideas or changes that you would like uh, staff to consider and to further evaluate? And just a quick reminder of uh, the study areas we will be covering. So I will be going into details about study areas uh, two. This is the Bella Mateo Bull and Molly Stone Shopping Center. Uh, six, that's the Campus Drive Laurel Wood Shopping Center area. Nine, that's the Hillsdale Norfolk area. And lastly, 10, that's the Bridgepoint Shopping Center. So I'll go ahead and dive straight into the first study area. Study area two, this is the Belmateo Bowl on Molly Stone Shopping Center. This is the study area that's located on the Belmont San Mateo city border. And just to quickly reorient everyone to the existing land uses, uh, what you see that's colored teal, that's where the Molly Stone Shopping Center and Belmateo Bowl is. Uh, this represents neighborhood commercial, high density multifamily uses. Uh, east of El Camino Real, what you see colored red, that's for neighborhood commercial. That includes an existing 7-Eleven uh, gas station. Also along Pacific Boulevard, we have service commercial use. That's colored pink. And outside of the, the commercial designation, we have a mix of uh, residential. So this tan color, that's, that's for high density multifamily. Uh, you see it up here along 41st place and 40th Ave. Uh, we also see that along North Road. And this brown color, it's a mixed use of regional community commercial high density multifamily. The study area two alternatives, A, B, and C would look at introducing low rise residential 
that's the light orange color you see, uh, that would be introduced at the Molly Stone Shopping Center and Bell Mateo Bowl. This is consistent among A, B, and C alternatives. Other key differences, uh, you'll see that in A, the red parcel uh, east of El Camino Real would be, would be kept. However, in B and C, we would look at a different range of mixed use. So that's the, the blue color. So B would consider low rise mixed use. C would consider medium rise mixed use. Uh, within the core commercial area, for the CVS and north of Molly Stone Market, uh, A would maintain that neighborhood commercial use. However, in B, we would look at low rise mixed use. And C would be a mix of low rise residential with neighborhood commercial use. So those are the key differences uh, among the different alternatives in study area two. If you have any comments or thoughts about this particular study area, feel free to share it. And Mary can go, go ahead and read off to, to us. Um, I have um, a couple comments um, and questions. How far is this location from the Belmont Caltrain station? Would it be walkable to that station? Yeah, that's a good question. I do. I remember looking at this and I believe it's within a mile radius. I think it's a, it, it may be a little over a mile. It, it might okay. be a t it might be a tough walk uh, to that station. Um, okay. The next comment is is residential low or mixed use low expected to be dense enough to induce the property owners to redevelop when they already make money from the com current commercial tenants? Yeah, that's that is a good question. So when we look at low rise uh, uses it's really looking at one to three stories. And that, I would say that closely matches what is existing. It's a lot of one to two story buildings. Um, yeah, so there's not, I think, much enticement then for development if it's a similar height. Yeah, hope that answers the questions, but we'll go ahead and uh, make note of your comment and question for the project team. Yeah, any other comments, Mary? No, it looks like we can move ahead. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So the next study area, number six, this is the campus drive area. This includes the Laurel Wood Shopping Center, which you see colored red. That represents neighborhood commercial. Uh, north of that, the main campus drive area, it's designated as executive office use. And that is consistent with what you see um, this, this particular area. It is mostly office buildings. And so that's, that's the purple color. The different alternatives being considered for the campus drive area, A, B, and C would introduce a range of uh, residential use. So in A, you'll see the color orange uh, that represents medium residential. B and C would look at expanding that. B is a mix of uh, medium residential with low rise residential. And C would look at replacing uh, the off existing office use with all medium residential use. A and B would designate Lorewood, the Lorewood Shopping Center area as low rise mixed use. Uh, C would maintain the existing general plan land use that it is currently, and that's for neighborhood commercial. And I do wanna clarify you know, the blue color that you see mixed use, it, it, it includes commercial office and residential. So it's multiple and a mix of uses that could be allowed. Yeah, so if you have any comments, uh, feel free to chat that to Mary. Um, there's a question, is the Peninsula Golf and Country Club privately owned land or does the city own that? Yeah, I, I have to think. I don't think it's city owned. I'm pretty positive it's yeah. it's a private um, property. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I see someone nodding their head. But <laughs> yeah, so it's outside the study area, Peninsula Golf mm -hmm. Country Club. And then here's a comment. It seems like residents in this area would have to drive wherever they need to go since there is not a lot of transit here. 
I could see some residential here to support the office space, but not all residential. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good comment. We'll go ahead and note that. And, and that's, th oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. You okay, no worries. Yeah, I was just going to say that we've heard that in other breakout rooms. You know, when we think about residential development, uh, we also have to consider, you know, the amenities, the needs, transportation needs that would be, that would follow it. Yep. Go ahead, Mary. Next um, comment. It says, wouldn't the property owners need to sell or change the existing structures? So the general plan looks at more broadly, you know, the range of uses that could be allowed. Um, because we have heard this in other workshops, you know, there's fear that, you know, if the land use changes, then it may, you know, mean a change of the existing development or existing use, um, but that's not necessarily true. I do want to mention that when uh, private properties get developed, um, they have to apply, send an application to the city, and we look at, you know, conformance with not just the zoning code, but the general plan policies as well. So if there is, you know, support for either office, mixed use, or residential, um, please go ahead and share that with us for the different study areas. I would also just go ahead and point out that redesignating the land use doesn't force anyone to change and it doesn't force anyone out of their properties. What it does is it creates a vision for the future, whereby when there's going to be change, um, there's different options available for the future. So um, an existing land use is not obligated to change, but when change does occur, then it we would need to occur according to the standards in place at the time. And so um, if it is a change that's different from what currently exists, um, then it wouldn't need a change. And sometimes it does change um, what's there currently. Um, and so it is, it is something to consider that the future might look different, but no one is forced to do anything now. Thanks, Christina. And the next comment is, what is the current use for land next to Campus Drive? Is it a candidate for R&D use? Hmm. Yeah, good question. So I don't have that general plan land use map in front of me, um, but we can go ahead and look at that separately and follow up with you. Um, and then the next one is, does the city expect that folks who would move here would come from cities or counties farther away? This might, they might still drive less living in this area than commuting from farther out. Yeah, so it's hard to say, you know, in the future, who will move into San Mateo, you know, with the new housing development. Um, I do want to ask, you know, for that commenter, maybe clarification. Uh, is there support to, you know, locate housing closer to jobs to, you know, for staff to consider that in our evaluation? Yeah, I mean, I just know that San Mateo has added a ton of jobs over the last decade. Uh, and I know a lot of people commute from outside the county. So even if this particular area is not particularly transit accessible, you know, living here instead of driving from Gilroy, uh, you'll be driving a lot less, less traffic on the roads in the end uh, and fewer carbon emissions. So just because you have to drive uh, to, to sort of live here and get to your job does not mean it's sort of net uh, negative in the in the overall. Thank you for clarifying that. And then the, the next comment is um, a comment that the alter, in alternative C, um, it's good that to keep commercial in this in that study area, they like that having that alternative there. Okay. And then could someone on residential property Changed commercial be denied permits for residential improvements. Can you repeat that question again, Mary? Could someone on residential property, oh, residential property changed to commercial be denied permits for residential improvement? No, yeah, so if, if it's an existing building, um, you know, the city allows that to continue to exist, you know, even if it may not you know, conform with the general plan land use. Although I'm not, not sure if I'm seeing where that, if there's a particular site that's in the study area being referred to. Um, that was just 
towards your comment earlier um, uh, about um, you know city not being not forcing you to change your property mm -hmm. usage, but could it inadvertently force you by not allowing you to do improvements to your property that are not according to the I see plan. So I think I can maybe answer that. And so I I believe, and I, and I and you can correct me if I'm if I'm not having this exactly right. That you're wondering that if an existing use could be rendered to be what we call non-conforming or a use that's no longer allowed but is a lot allowed to stay because it's already there. And then when that use proposes to do things that um, would perpetuate or intensify it, there are limitations. And that is true. That is um, something that's true of many cities, um, that when zoning designations or land use designations change, it can render some existing land uses um, I don't want to say obsolete because they're still there and they're still in existence and generally they're still allowed to remain as long as they're continuous. But if there's a change or if there's a lapse of over a certain amount of time, it could be that the use would have to discontinue. And so um, that is something to be considered because there's a vision for the long term future and there's always remnants of the past. And so cities do struggle with how to reconcile those things as they move forward. Um, but that's why we don't force folks to change. Um, usually when we see a legal non-conforming use that ends up um, going away, it's because there is a proposal to change or because the use stopped for a duration long enough to where um, it was deemed that it can no longer continue. Um, from my experience, it's usually about six months. Is tends to be the typical amount of time that a use can lapse. Okay, so well, if, hopefully that clarifies. Uh, it did, but then it didn't. So if, maybe if I could just re re um, repeat what I heard. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're a single family home and your property has been rezoned, let's say commercial, and you want to make it into a duplex, it potentially would be denied because the area was now being zoned commercial. Okay. Potentially, that's theoretical um, and and a little bit simplified um, in terms of and, and I and I get that you know we're things are are a little bit um, different for us planners when we think of them. It would normally go the other way around, and so in a lot of commercial districts, you can still have some kind of residential use. But yes, the, the short answer to your question is theoretically, yes, that could happen. You could have a residential property and a single family residence on that property. And that does happen to cities. Over time, the district becomes more vibrant. It becomes more um, intensified. It becomes more of a um, commercial center or a mixed use center. And so, um, if you wanted to change the use of that property, say from an existing single family residence to something else, you would need to do something that was in line with the zoning and the general plan in existence at the time. And so if a duplex wasn't part of that plan, you would not be able to do a duplex. I would also say that it's possible if you had a single family residence um, in a single family residential zone, you might not be able to do a duplex there anyway. And so there's limitations within the different land use categories um, and there, there may be some limitations on existing land uses that want to change over time. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Christina. Are there any more comments, Mary? Otherwise, I'll move on to the next study area. Yeah, um, there are no more comments, but we have about six minutes left just okay. so you, to give you a heads up. Thanks, Mary. So we do have two more study areas to cover. The next study area, number nine, this is the Hillsdale Norfolk area. Uh, that's along the 101. East Hillsdale Boulevard exit freeway area. And so some existing uses, uh, what you see colored pink, that represents regional community commercial. Uh, that's where along Frank Franklin Parkway, this is the Kaiser Medical Office building. Uh, across from that, along East Hillsdale Boulevard, this is the Hillsdale Inn. Another landmark to note is uh, Marina Plaza Shopping Center. So that's colored red. Uh, that represents neighborhood commercial currently as a general plan land use. Uh, the different alternatives being considered, uh, A, B, and C, you'll, no you'll notice at the Marina Plaza Shopping Center, uh, there's different land use colors. 
So A would keep uh, the regional or would change it to the regional commercial use. Uh, B would look at introducing medium mixed use, that's colored blue, uh, ma while maintaining some regional commercial use in the red. And C would be a mix of uh, neighborhood commercial and regional commercial use. Other things to note, uh, A, B, and C, so where the Kaiser parcel is. So it would redesignate that as a medium office. That would be consistent with uh, the, the way that it's developed now for medical office use. And across from that, at the Hillsdale Inn, you see low rise uh, residential, which is the light orange color. Uh, that's also consistent with a planning project for residential development on this site. Uh, key things, so C would, would generate the least net new homes. So you'll see in the table, roughly 40 new units. Uh, A and B, B would actually generate the most, um, roughly 290 net new units. Uh, A would be second highest. Yeah, so these are other things uh, to review as well. What that means in terms of homes, population, and job growth. Are there any comments, Mary, for this study area? Yes, um, there's a question. What is currently between East Hillsdale and Point Seattle? Yeah, so I'll have to, I can look at a map, but I want to say that there is a BevMo. There is a store. Yeah, there is a BevMo, and I think yeah. there's um, a ethnic market or, mm -hmm. or a just like a, yes. yeah, something like that. Yeah, I like guess. Like a one story. Yes, single story. Like India, Indian yes. food market. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's along um, this, this side of study area nine. Okay. There's another comment. The housing here has a similar problem as the housing next to El Camino Rio. Being right next to the freeway is not a great, great due to the pollution and noise unless you are in a very tall building. Can the denser housing be put further back from the highway in the areas in white? Yeah, no, that's a that's a good comment. Um, and I just want to make sure that we we have the right area. Nick, um, Nikki, do you feel like you have a sense of um, the location that they they would like to see the higher density housing? Sure, um, they're wanting it to be offset from the freeway, right? So they're trying to look yeah. for towards kind of like Saratoga Drive, essentially, or more towards like Norfolk instead of being right by the interchange. Yeah. I can yeah, we, circle that. Yeah, we just want to make sure we're capturing your comments accurately. Okay. And then um, there's a couple more. The houses in white are zoned R1. Okay, yeah, that's that's true. I believe there's some commercial property near the BevMo. Residential low doesn't seem to make sense. This could be a good area for higher density housing. So maybe an option for higher density housing in those areas is what Okay. The commenter is saying. Yeah. So another comment. So it would um, likely be these parcels that they're mentioning for the BevMo area, considering high density residential. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we have about one minute left okay. to get to the next area. Okay. So I will do my best because <laughs> I do think it's important for everyone to get a sense of the different study areas. So the last one, this is the Bridgepoint Shopping Center. Uh, I won't describe the existing. I think everyone has a good sense. You know, it's mainly office campus, Bridgepoint Shopping Center. There's also a hotel, which is on that pink uh, regional community commercial parcel. And so the different alternatives being considered, uh, there is preservation of some office use, which is that dark purple color. Um, but this, for this study area, we are looking at introducing a uh, residential use, uh, mainly within the Bridgepoint Shopping Center. So in C, you'll see this orange color that is uh, medium residential use. B would introduce this blue, which is a low rise mixed use. And again, mixed use can include anything from commercial, office, residential. Uh, A would maintain the commercial regional designation. Uh, other key differences, uh, this parcel along Fashion Island Boulevard. In A, it would look at medium residential. So the existing is office. Uh, B and C would maintain office use, um, but propose that medium rise. So that's that's the last study area. Okay, and, and it's time to move. I'm okay. sorry, Linda. No worries. Thanks everyone for your time. Enjoy the last uh, breakout session discussion.
and Julia will be joining. Oh, Julia's here. Hi. And Wendy are, it should be joining us now. Mm -hmm. And just a note, the comments that you're providing now are being um, recorded if you, we weren't able to address them, um, but they are going to be transcribed and added for the meeting. So give me one moment. I'm trying to share my screen and also adjust my um, screen so I can see everybody. So one second. OK. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Uh, for those that are sharing your video, I, I love meeting new people. So hi. Um, so real quickly, I will be covering uh, four study areas, study area one, four, five, and seven. And I'll go ahead and just uh, just real quickly, you know, study area one is on the northern segment of El Camino, study area four is downtown. Study area five is north San Mateo Drive up to Peninsula Avenue, which is that Burlingame border. And then study area seven is along um, Highway 101, the northern segment of it. And then it'll cover North Shore View and uh, North, uh, a portion of North Shore View and a portion of North Central. So um, as Joanna had mentioned in the uh, initial presentation, there are two key questions that we're asking community members. And <clears throat> first one is, is this the right range of uh, alternative scenarios? And then the second question is, are there ideas or changes missing that you would like to see evaluated? So those are the key questions uh, we'll be uh, looking for your input on. Um, so just real quickly, my name is Julia Klein. And then with me this evening is Wendy Lau. Um, hmm. Wendy, there we go. She's back online. OK. Wendy will be. Um, she's Sorry, having, I found out for some reason. It's very strange. Um, so a tech glitch. Um, so Wendy um, is also having um, video uh, issues in terms of her connection. So she is listening, but not able to share her uh, video. <clears throat> so she is taking notes. And so, you know, just so that you know, um, you know, she is going to be typing away um, and capturing your comments and your questions. I won't go through this slide since you've probably already seen it in the other uh, presentations. And then also the key differences in terms of the three alternatives. Um, just real quickly, alternative A has the least amount of change. Alternative B has the second highest residential growth and that spreads that growth um, across the 10 study areas. And then alternative C is proposing the highest residential growth and then concentrates that growth along the rail corridor and downtown. And so we're not asking you to choose alternatives, but more along the question of, are these the right you know, range to study? <clears throat> So alternative A, just to let you know, um, the existing land use designations are a mix of medium and high density residential. And then mixed in among that are some properties that are um, executive office and then uh, uh, allowing for some mixed use with uh, high density um, medium uh, uh, residential. <clears throat> So um, in terms of the three alternatives, um, the areas that I like to sort of point your attention to are um, the areas that are uh, in alternative A. You'll note that along uh, El Camino and West Poplar, that area is designated as a residential uh, low. And then in the southern portion of El Camino on this segment, uh, you note that there's a, a light blue, uh, that's uh, medium uh, mixed use. And then also a brown color, and that's for residential high. In the alternative B, uh, that same area that we had mentioned earlier in terms of El Camino and Poplar, that uh, a part of that uh, property um, is uh, designated as commercial uh, neighborhood and that's the red color. As you go south, you'll still see that uh, there is that uh, dark brown uh, residential color designation and that's residential high. Julia, can I pause you and just ask you to full screen the... Um... Sure. Yeah, mm. thank you. Is that a little bit better? Mm. I can certainly zoom in too. Um, if there's any geographic areas anybody would like me to zoom in on. So alternative C, um, you'll note that the area that's Poplar and El Camino, that's uh, changing to uh, the orange color, which is medium residential. And then south of that is a uh, darker blue color, which is mixed use high, as well as the brown color, which is the same brown parcel um, across all three alternatives. So with this change in terms of the, uh, the mix of uh, land use colors, uh, it, it's also reflected in the net new dwelling units and net new jobs. And so that's reflected in the tables at the bottom. Um, are there any areas that you would like me to zoom in on? Or any questions or comments? Um, 
about study area one. Um, here's a comment. It looks like all the existing multifamily housing is on the east side of El Camino Rio in this area. Can there be more multifamily on the west side of El Camino Rio? So um, thank you for that uh, question. Um, I think this is the opportunity for you to, to you know, have that reflected as a comment. You know, and so we can capture that um, uh, in here. Um, so Wendy is taking notes. So thank well, you for that. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, again, this is, you know, the, the two questions that we talked about earlier are, um, are, are these the, the right ranges, right mixes of uses um, to study in terms of, you know, we're not choosing any alternatives. What we're asking for is, are, are these, the, you know, combinations um, you know, uh, for us to study, you know, the appropriate uh, range to kind of study. And then the other question is, are there, um, you know, uses or um, any ideas that's missing from, from these? Okay, if there are none, then we can go ahead and uh, jump to the next study area, which is downtown. Um, actually, Juliet, oh. they're, they're, I'm sorry, I muted myself. Um, they're requesting that you could zoom in on each um, alternative because sure. they're having a tough time seeing them. Sure, absolutely. So let me know if I've zoomed in enough. So this is alternative A. <clears throat> it looks big, much bigger, Julia. Okay, thank you. Um, so alternative A, like uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, West Poplar and El Camino, this area is currently a gas station. And so um, the light brown or the light orange designation is for low residential. And then let me see if I can go on to the next one. So this is um, alternative B, and then that same gas station area is uh, designated as red, and that's a neighborhood commercial. And then as we go into alternative C, um, that same area on Poplar and El Camino, that's uh, now instead of, um, you know, that red, you know, that area, which is right next to the word uh, real, El Camino real uh, word, um, that area is designated here as um, residential medium. So let me know if there's any, um, if you want me to scroll back. There is a comment. What is the blue area south end of the map? Okay, so this is the blue color uh, means, um, and that's uh, mixed use high. So what this means is that for those uh, properties that are here for alternative C, um, it would be a change in uh, proposing the land use, which would change to uh, mixed use uh, commercial. And then there's a comment that there are some really tall buildings in this part in parts of this area. Can the immediate surroundings of those existing buildings also be zoned high density residential? That way you'd get a lot more new homes with similar feel to the area. I think um, that's a good um, observation to capture. Um, <clears throat> so Wendy is typing. And so I, I understand that it's posed as a question, but um, I think what we're asking for is input. So we're, we'll go ahead and capture that as um, an observation uh, and then, as part of the comments. And there's a request that um, that it's already overdeveloped. Is there an option to not consider any new or additional development? We can certainly capture that comment. However, I do want to mention, and this is part of the presentation that um, you know Joanna had indicated earlier, which is um, San Mateo as a community has grown over time. And in the next 20 years, um, it is anticipated to continue to grow. Um, we do have community members who are currently living in San Mateo that are concerned about the future and lack of housing opportunities and affordable housing opportunities. And so part of the exercise of the general plan is to plan for growth. Um, and so I understand the comment about, you know, um, in general, um, not, not changing, not um, uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, in this area. And I think Wendy will go ahead and capture that comment, but I do want to, you know, sort of also bring everybody back to what Joanna has said in the original plan, um, original uh, presentation, which is what we're 
doing now is looking at the future in the next 20 years and a lot can happen in the next 20 years. And so part of what we're trying to do is look at, um, you know, uh, what the existing situation is. And there are some areas that may change. There are some areas that may not change. And so what we're looking for is comments from you guys, your observations. You live in San Mateo, you work in San Mateo. You have a feel for what um, changes might be appropriate. You know, there may be some changes in some areas and then, you know, you know, less changes in others. And so um, just generally, you know, um, we're going to capture that comment. But I also am asking everybody just to, to think about the fact that the general plan is planning for 20 years. So uh, let me go ahead and get back down to the right scale. And then uh, we can jump to the next study area, which is uh, downtown. So just real, um, real quickly, the downtown area, um, the one thing that threads through all three alternatives is the downtown historic area, which is this uh, uh, sort of dark um, line that's in the middle. <clears throat> it's on Third Avenue and a portion of uh, South uh, B Street. And so that same geographic area is reflected in all three alternatives. The key differences uh, in regards to these alternatives, you'll see that in alternative A, it's mostly this uh, uh, light blue color and that's um, mixed use medium. And then in alternative B, you'll see that there's an introduction of these darker blue um, color and the, this is reflective of mixed use high. And then in alternative C, you'll see that there's more of those um, blocks and parcels that are mixed use high. And so that's associated with what you see in terms of the, the net new jobs um, that's in the table at the bottom. The other thing to note is that as you look at these maps, um, the portions of the blocks that are between El Dorado and uh, the highway, um, a lot of these that are noted in alternative A and B are this medium residential color, this medium orange color. As you go into alternative C, uh, you'll see that there's the introduction of this lighter orange color and that's reflective of uh, residential low. Um, the other areas uh, to kind of focus um, uh, today, uh, you wanna look at uh, Fifth Avenue along the railroad corridor. Um, in alternative A, that area is all mixed use medium. In alternative B, you'll see the introduction of this uh, medium shade of orange and that's uh, medium residential. And then as you go into alternative um, uh, C, you'll see that this is high residential and then also mixed use medium. And so those are the key differences. Um, let me know if there are any questions. And then we had a question from one of the other groups about what is the red color. Um, the red color is the Mi Rancho market, just to uh -huh. kind of help orient everybody. So just so for timing, we've got about 10 minutes left, Julia. OK. Um, there's a comment. Um, that somebody thinks that we should be adding as many new homes as we can downtown, um, that Redwood City is doing a better job of this with many apartments available for rent right downtown, close to everything. So that was a comment. Thank you for that general comment. Okay. All right, is there any, um, any areas that you want me to zoom in on or are there any additional comments or questions? Otherwise we can go to the other two and then we can always come back. There doesn't seem to be any more comments right now. Okay, why don't we go to study area five. So study area five is, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's a North um, San Mateo Drive up to Peninsula. The current mix of land uses are medium and high density residential as well as some commercial and then office. So um, to look at the key differences between these three alternatives, you'll note that Safeway is, uh, commercial use and it's serving the community here. And so in alternative A, B, and C, A is showing this as a commercial neighborhood, which is the current designation. In alternative B, um, that area is introduced uh, with a medium mixed use. And then in alternative C, that's low mixed use with a lighter blue color. Um, in addition to that, you'll note that along Peninsula Avenue, um, the current uses that are there right now are a mix of um, small um, commercial and with um, alternative A, uh, the uh, proposed land use is low residential in alternative B that's being proposed to be medium residential and then in alternative C that's being proposed to be uh, mixed use low. 
The other area to focus on is uh, along San Mateo Drive and um, Poplar Avenue. So in alternative A, that's a mix of uh, neighborhood commercial, which is the red color, and then low office, which is that light uh, purple color. In alternative B, you see that that area, that same geographic area is uh, this medium blue, and that's reflective of mixed use medium. And then in alternative C, uh, the same red and purple, but in addition to that, you'll note that there is um, the brown color, which is the residential high, and then an introduction of a uh, mixed use high. And so those are the uh, key areas of difference. Um, and with those uh, differences in terms of um, uh, the colors uh, are reflected in differences in our dwelling units, net new dwelling units, as well as net new jobs. Um, are there any questions or areas you would like to, me to zoom in on or any, any comments you'd like to share? And again, I just want to mention, you know, uh, we're not choosing alternatives uh, tonight. What we're looking for is really, are there, you know, um, are there ideas uh, missing from any of these alternatives that you would like um, the team, the general plan team to, to study? And then um, are, are these the right range of, of uses? Um, and as Joanna mentioned in the presentation, you know, we're not going to be choosing one, you know, ultimately you, you might be able to kind of mix and match. You know, but right now, you know, before we get into the technical studies, the question is, is this a, about the right range to study? There is a question about what is currently at the brown section in option C. Um, we could, let's see. So currently that's along Tilton and, and Santa Inez. So the current land uses are um, executive office. Now, you're, if you're talking about existing businesses, um, I don't have that information, but we can certainly pull up on Google Maps if, um, let me see if I can do that. If you don't mind me doing this. So um, that was Tilton and San Mateo Drive, right? So it is a mix of different, there's, you know, different churches as well as some offices. So it is reflective of that uh, sort of office designation that we saw earlier. So this executive office designation. Churches can be located and, you know, by um, in any zoning districts. And so this is not proposing that we remove a church. Um, and so just so that you know that. <laughs> um, there is a comment. Um, the study area is too gerrymandered. Um, it should be a whole cohesive area, even if that includes current single family homes. Thank you for that comment. Um, as Joanna mentioned earlier, um, currently these none of these alternatives include single family, but if there is, you know, um, through all these comments, you know, a consistent thread, then that there's an opportunity to, to kind of consider that. So thank you for that comment. Um, I don't see any more comments uh, here, but there is some about downtown, just agreement with that the should be as much housing as possible. And then a comment that maybe there should be more on the west side of the um, west side of downtown for um, more housing. Okay, great. Thank you for the comment. And then how much time do we have left? We have about uh, four minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and go to study area seven. I just want to make sure we give everybody a chance to look at that area too. So study area seven is um, along El Camino, uh, sorry, not El Camino, Highway 101, and it's uh, capturing both sides of that. And so as you'll note right now, um, the land uses that are out there are service commercial. And then um, on the uh, east side of 101 is a mix of residential. And then uh, Shoreview Shopping Center is the portion that's designated in red. So those are the existing land use designations. And then as we go into the alternatives, um, you'll see an alternative A that um, along North Amphlet, all of those service commercial, which is pink, is remaining. Um, and then a Shoreview Shopping Center is um, designated as mixed use low with this light blue. In alternative B, some of the um, blocks on North Amphlet is changing to medium residential with this medium orange color. And then some of it is changing to residential high with this brown color. And then uh, Shoreview Shopping Center is, is uh, then changed to medium mixed use with this medium blue color. 
Then in alternative C, you know, the three blocks that are the southern portion of North Amphlet is changing to um, residential medium. And then Shoreview Shopping Center is uh, designated with this darker blue color, which is um, high mixed use. And so, um, uh, let's see. So again, you know, that's these differences in the colors are reflected in the net new dwelling units and the, um, the jobs numbers that you see in the table at the bottom. And are there any questions? Are there any areas you want me to zoom in on? Um, there is a comment um, that the whole area is going to be subject to flooding with sea level rise. Is this being taken into consideration? That is one of those um, things that we are uh, aware of. And um, as we look at um, the technical studies and opportunities for um, how redevelopment may occur, we will need to look at you know what those regulations are and uh, maybe uh, also adjust you know what the the base level is for new development um, there's also um, the issue of infrastructure improvements to address um, sea level rise and so all of that is part of the next phase of the work that we need to do which is in looking into the technical studies, um, the impacts um, of development and change. Um, and that's also considering, you know, as we uh, look at differences in changing from one use to another, um, you know, how do you transition existing businesses and existing residents, you know, and factoring that into the overall, you know, conversation of, you know, what, aside from the technical, how does that change, you know, evolve in a community? How does that change happen? And how, how does that affect residents and businesses? And then um, we have about one minute left and there's a comment. How can we express our desire for no change in R1 zoning in San Mateo? Um, you can use this opportunity to, um, to comment as well. Um, and I think, um, you know, currently, um, as Chris, uh, as um, Joanna had mentioned earlier in the presentation, the R1 neighborhoods are not included in any of the study areas uh, currently. And so um, <clears throat> we will note your comment down. I think Wendy is taking notes. And we've got about 14 yeah, seconds. Yeah, okay. It says the region seems to be very targeted use changes at the small parcel level, need more call out of the differences in the scenarios for future consideration. 